Welcome, everybody. Mm -hmm. It's fabulous to see a full house on our, our open house. And And we want to thank the Montecito Bank and Trust for sponsoring this entire day. And our dear, dear friends, Seymour and Shirley Lehrer, for sponsoring all of the vocal master classes. <laughs> Looking for seats, people? You got them? Okay. Some seats are right here. There's one here and there's two here. Yeah. It's okay. Are these people coming in from the back? Don't hesitate, just come on in. So this is the, our second master class, but the one that I'm in charge of. <laughs> the other one, I, all I had to do was introduce our wonderful singers and pianists. Uh, we're going to start um, right away with the singing so that I don't talk too long. But one of the pieces we're going to do, the very first piece, is uh, <clears throat> from Tannhäuser of Wagner, O du mein holder Abendstern, which is um, a baritone aria, a very famous baritone aria. And just a tiny bit of information that Tannhäuser was an opera that Wagner never finished with. He kept redoing it and redoing it there so that we have, we have several versions even that are available. It seems that what we have ended up with is what's called the Paris version, but he had a lot of trouble in Paris. There, because, because he was, re, uh, he wanted it in a, another theater other than the Paris Opera, but it, that's where it ended up. And so because it ended up there, he had to write a ballet because that was absolutely de rigueur for Paris, you, Paris opera. You had to write a ballet. Well, that, it, he put it into the first act and that really put the noses out of joint of a club called the Jockey Club. It made me think of the, the, the men at um, the Metropolitan Opera, the Opera Club, who, who are privy to wonderful seats. They pay for them, by the way. Uh, and uh, several other perks, shall we say. But these guys only wanted to come to the ballet. The, the jockey club was really put out because they had to come to the first act. That meant they had to start at the beginning of the opera. They, they only wanted to come in in the second act when the ballet started, and then they got to leave when the ballet was over. And apparently when they left, they picked up a few ballet girls on the way. <laughs> in any event, that is the version that we have pretty much ended up with in, in this world, except Tannhäuser isn't done very much. Why? Because the tenors don't want to sing that role. It lies in a very precarious spot which we call the passage, which it's, the passage means going from chest voice to head voice. <laughs> it's like pa passing from one register to the other and it just stays where it passes. And it's very tiring and very, very much not to the liking of tenors. So Tannhäuser is not done a lot these days but it still has a few very famous arias. This is one of them. Dich teure Halle is another one. In fact, we hear that a lot when we're listening to young singers. Ladies whose voices are fairly heavy already love to sing that aria. And all the Pilgrim's Chorus is still famous, and of course the Overture is still played a lot in symphony concerts. But in any event, I know, because I read it in a book, that uh, Wagner's widow, Cosima Wagner, who was the daughter of Franz Liszt, um, was <clears throat> uh, writing her memoirs, and she concluded right near the end of his life that he never really, he said, I, he said, I have not finished with Tannhäuser, three days before he died. <laughs> 
So uh, anyway, he did pretty well with a lot of things that came afterwards, like the whole ring and Tristan and Isolde and Meistersinger. In any event, I need my two guys, Michael and, oh no, I've got a gal, Jessica. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. So, um, uh, who is this guy? Is he, is he a friend of, of Tannhäuser? Uh, I love Tannhäuser, but I'm jealous of him because he has the love of Elizabeth. Um, I'm also a knight, and I'm very conflicted by um, chivalry and my <coughs> duty to well, my duty, and also um, this powerful love for Elizabeth, who loves Tannhäuser and will not give me the time of day. <laughs> so what, what is he saying, and what, what, what's the situation he's in right now when he sings this aria? <coughs> so Tannhäuser uh, has just left to go on a, a pilgrimage to Rome uh, to cleanse himself and to gain um, forgiveness from the Pope for some deeds that he's done, and Elizabeth has just waited for his return. A group of pilgrims has just marched by on their return from Rome where Tannhäuser was supposed to be. Uh, and he was not seen by, she was, he was not seen in that group by Elizabeth. Um, so Elizabeth has sort of given up. Well, no, she has totally given up and now has resolved to die because Tannhäuser will not be back and they will not be, she will not have his love. And Wolfram tries to accompany her and she, for lack of a better term, she shuts me down. And I'm left alone, staring into a valley, and left with my own dark thoughts. And what do you want? Is this a prayer? Is it yes. like a prayer? It's yeah. Exactly like a prayer. I am praying that even though Elizabeth never loved me, I've loved her faithfully, and I see the evening star, and that has always been a great uh, hope and source of guidance for me. And so I pray that on her passage and her ascension to heaven, uh, the evening star treats her well and guides her to where she deserves to be. Okay, and if we also now heard, learn from you that this is a confused and difficult plot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's anyway, point this aria is famous, so yeah. here you go. <laughs>
very, very good. Uh, you already took a very slow tempo, so I don't have to shock you with mine. Uh, I, I have often have coached this with other gentlemen, and they're amazed at that I really like this tempo. But you like it? That's great. We can just really love it and wallow in it. Okay, the very first thing that struck me from the um, opening phrase of the recit is I need a little something todus anu. I need a tiny little bit of uh, a glottal there. You know, just a little bit. Todus ah, this ah, you know, not, not overdone. And then uh, at the bottom, of, excuse me, at the bottom of the page, uh, it umhult das Tal mit. I need to hear the L and the M. I have to give you my little lecture on German. German has to be exaggerated. The consonants have to be exaggerated, as does English. So if you think you're overdoing it, you probably aren't, because it's a, it's a tough language to, to get across with all of these uh, difficult consonants, right? So let's try to get the Talmit in, in together, I mean, both of them. Schwerzlichem, that also that, that, a couple of your CHs, those, you gotta figure out how to do those because they're absolutely necessary. I mean, I, I can think of some that where I figured out, now in this phrase I need that CH so badly, but it's such a long phrase and it's quiet, I don't know what to do. And I finally figured out that if I put my tongue on my back teeth and did, it would come out as CH. Okay. <laughs> you can use that if you need it. Uh, and then at the, uh, when you sing Der Seele, um, Der Seele, I think it needs to be a little tighter vowel. Der Seele instead of Seele. Seele. Then why didn't you breathe there? He's got a comma, and you've got, uh, you, if you, you, we don't want you to, to run out of air so that you can sustain the phrase. I think you didn't take a breath. Okay, let's try it then with the breath and see if it's any more, I didn't feel you were comfortable. Okay. That's what, what bothers me. Okay, let's go back and start at the beginning. <clears throat> This is what I'm talking about. More. It's a lot more than you think it should be. You gotta, you gotta make them a little, little louder. Just sing Demrung. Demrung deckt die Lande. Good. Umhilt das Tal mit schwerslichem Gewande. See, you really need to get Thus, yeah. gotta get those two consonants in too. I'm gonna need a bigger breath. Um, what? I'm gonna need a bigger breath. Before or you can breathe. Oh. Um, hört das Tal, after Tal. That'd be great. I've heard that a lot. Okay. okay. You wanna sing that phrase? Yeah. Um, hört das Tal. Oh no, darling, after Tal, sorry. Das 
don't, I just, I don't want you to learn it wrong. Mit is a quarter. So it's tal mitzvah slishim. Instead of mitzvah, tiny thing, but the tiny things count. Same. Let's do it again. Um weird. Um het das tal mitzvah. Recognizing that when you have to put these consonants on, you lose air. A lot. A lot of air. So that's the other thing you have to figure out when you're practicing, how not to lose so much air. I, I also think that I like this um, aria so smooth, so I don't like any sense of being stentorian with your tones. Do you know what I mean? I like it going like this. You know, like, dear Zila, dear, just to let one phrase roll into the other with the consonants, unfortunately. <laughs> so when you sing for, for ihrem Flug durch Nacht, is that where you read? Now, yeah. Yeah. Trust me, probably when you're on stage and there's an orchestra and everything, you want to take those breaths. Okay? All right, let's go on to the aria. Again, the same feeling. Uh, excuse me, I, I want to say something else. Pick, pick your bars that you want to feel in for, but basically, I think it's much nicer to feel this aria into but there are certain bars you're going to want to divide so you, you'll you know, be exact. But, but try to think of it in two, and that makes you think, think much smoother. All right, sorry. Again, please, Jessica. forgot that I had some more things to say before the, <laughs> before the rest of it is over. Just a couple of tiny things. All right, da shinest du, o lieblichster, not ster. Lieblichster der Fettsterne. And of course, I liked Roald R's. <laughs> there are two schools of thought on R's in German. Not all R's, but certain R's, whether they should be, as I would say, swallowed, like if you said, der Herr, der Herr, I hate it. I was brought up singing, der Herr. So I, I like people to, to roll their R's. We have a, a definite conflict here about that. So um, you'll, you'll hear both. And they're both, I guess, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, does Shinus do? Okay, wait, let me, let me tell you what I've got here. Dein sanftes Licht. I think you have to breathe there, too. I'm going to have to breathe a lot. Yeah, you, we gotta, <laughs> we've got to get Licht on. And then, at the entire Dein lieber Strahl. Now, that one you would roll, absolutely. Even, even the... The lovers of the glottal R will say, you got to roll that one. Strahl. And then, und freundlichs. Ah, lichts. 
zeigst. You gotta get all that in. Sorry. All right. Da scheinest du. Sorry. Paint the picture. Hear, hear the, what the, what's in. It's, it's like a, a light is coming from this star, right? Let's, let's, let's hear that in your voice, too. because you sound really, really good. Two things. When you take the breath, try to do, the, do them quicker so that we don't have a, a big gap, unless, of course, there is a rest. But also, when you sing something like, from Herzen, da, see, did you breathe after Herzen? I don't know. No, you didn't. Did Probably you? not. Herzen, das sie nie verriet. You've got to hold all of those all the way out. That makes it seem smoother. And, and trust me, if you can possibly think in a slow two, you're going to, have a lo you're going to think you have a lot more breath. Okay. <laughs> Shall we try that? Part? Right, from O, from o Holder. Don't do mine holder. And by the way, you pronounce D E R correct this time. Last time was holder, now it's holder. Holder correct. <laughs> <clears throat>
the time you sang it without any little suggestions from me, you do this very, very well. These are just things that add to it, that make your performance more perfect. Wonderful. Thank you, dear. And now we have Boya Wei, who is going to sing the presentation of the rose from Rosenkavalier. Hi. Okay, um, some of you here may not know that this school holds a tie to this opera, Rosenkavalier, because one of our great founders, Lotte Lehmann, was very much attached to this opera. She was considered the epitome of one of these roles, that is the role of the marshal and the considered advanced in age lady who's about 30. <laughs> I think. <laughs> and she started actually singing this role before she went on to singing the, that lady. But she, I think for people who probably study the role of the Marshallin, she is still somebody that everybody would look up and try to see what she did that was so special. Because I never, unfortunately, saw her on stage or heard her in person but I've heard an awful lot of her recordings. And she was so incredible to make things come alive with the words. She was just fabulous with that. And, and that's why she also was a great leader singer. And we, that we all had the pleasure of learning from her too. So it, I just want you to know that Rosen, Rosen Cavalier means a lot here. Um, so what's going on here? Who are you, Sophie? is carrying the tradition. Um, Boya, yeah. any, any chance of speaking louder? Yes. <laughs> Go forward, too. OK. So I'm Sophie, and this is happening in Act 2, uh, where Octavian is carrying the tradition of present this silver rose as an engagement um, to Sophie. So I'm just here all nervous and don't know what's going on, and then I see Octavian, the moment I see him, I just fall in love with him. This is actually a duet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I want to get into all of the story, but we have just had an act where he has been making love to the Marshallin. And he's only about 17. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's a very big part of this story. And the other part is that uh, his name is Octavian, right? Yes. And, and he's a male, and he's sung by a woman. So there we are. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things in opera that you have to get used to. And I have to tell you, the first time I saw Rosenkavalier, I could not believe that the Octavian was a woman singing as a male. I really had to get used to that. But I did get used to it. In fact, I sang so many damn male roles, I can't even count them. <laughs> All right, my dear, so now she's introducing herself, right? Yes. Okay. Thank 
very nice. I have very little to say. That was really lovely. But I would like to just, if I can, help you get a little more sound on the very first notes. And that, that is ich bin, right? If you just keep the bin where the ish is, don't try to do anything except resonate here. Is that the right pitch, by the way? <laughs> C sharp? <laughs> Miracle. Okay, just try and keep it right there. Don't open any, anything else, right, right here. That's good. Now, can you sing it louder? That's it. <laughs> Don't be afraid to make it a little ugly sounding. This is what we have to get used to, that those sounds sound much worse, is that the right word? Yes, much worse to us than they do to the listener. So you can exaggerate by saying, Ich bin. See, that's got a little more buzz in it. That everybody agrees, okay? Yeah. Is, does it sound ugly to you? No. Oh, <laughs> good. Okay, now we've got Euer Liebten, right? Yeah. So don't do anything except keep it in the same place. Ich bin euer Liebten. Ich bin euer Liebten. Yeah, good. Okay. Okay, let's do it with the piano now, right there where the tremolo starts. <laughs> Dropped your jaw for oil. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Put your teeth together into it. Yes. Go in that direction. Okay, do it one more time. <coughs> To get a little more sound out of the D sharp. Then, right? No, that's the wrong one. Excuse me. Forgive, forgive me. That was fine. I, I was already looking where I wanted to go. <laughs> All right. I, now I want to skip to uh, in aller Ewigkeit verbunden. All right. Now the thing is, when you sing verbunden, just sing verbunden for me. Remember that sound you just made on each bin, okay? It's not so far away from there, right? It's a C sharp and a D sharp. And also, don't try to connect them. Don't try to bring anything down where you have on the high D sharp to the low D sharp. It's got its position, and the low D sharp has its position. Sing that again, just sing Verbunden. <coughs> R. Fail. Roll it for me, please. <laughs> oh, please, yes. You, also, you really overdo it. Fail. You know, roll the R, please, just for me, okay? Uh, but Pepun, it's den on the bottom. And don't be afraid to sing it louder. Okay. Also, you're probably close to out of breath there, right? Are you close to out of breath? Okay, sing the whole phrase for me. 
Ich bin euer Liebten. about that. Okay. Now the one thing I wondered about was uh hot iron and stark and get rosen. I have no idea why I made that circle. <laughs> well first of all I want to hear the C sharp on hot, right? I would you have to intone that. An awful lot of Sophie's dear just sort of streak by those lower notes. It's good if you can sing them at the, so that people can hear them. And if you're in a house the size of the Metropolitan Opera, you have to put out more sound, you understand? Yeah. yeah, you've got it, so I think you can do it. But anyway, uh, where are you breathing? Are you breathing at all in this phrase? Hat einen starken, right? After me, Biro, uh, before Biro's. Is it possible to do it in one breath and just kind of move it forward? Yeah. You want to try it? Yeah. Right there? <laughs> problem at all. Yeah. I mean, you were probably nervous. <laughs> and, and when you get nervous, man, does that take your breath away. <laughs> <clears throat> but you know what to do when you have those nerves? Just get that diaphragm out there and try to hold it there as much as you can with your back muscles and you know, your glutes and your calves and everything. Just hold that position. I mean, obviously, we don't want you to get locked but if you can not drop that support, your nerves will go away so fast, I can't tell you. Got that? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's look at is uh, that was fine. Okay. Again, seat I need to hear. Ist bereits zu stark, als das man sehr tragen kann. So that's number 32, Andrew. I need, I'm sorry, I need, I, I need you to do the whole thing because the problem is you have all these really, really high notes and, and you have to be able to then get down low and not bring the top with you because you've got to get into this resonant sound uh, in the middle and the lower too. Okay? okay? Let's do it from, that was by the way, es wie ein Gruß. Yeah, I thought that was really good. Now there's another way you can look at this. Again, this is about air. You're singing, ist wie ein groß breath, right? From here, and you're detaching for the high B flat. Okay. You can also do this by not taking the breath on between groß and from. Right? Because you're going to get air detaching for the B flat. So if you're singing, Ist wie ein Gruß vom I got plenty of air just then. Because you, you, you've got, you, you did the detach, which is great, and that's the way everybody sings it. And it's, and it's wonderful. Try to do it, just, just, See if it's possible. You may find something that you really like. Okay. Just ist wie ein Gruß vom I got a lot of air. Of course, I didn't sing the B flat. <laughs> Haven't sung those for a long time. <laughs> okay, let's try that. I think that works 
for you. Okay? This is basically from here on. It's it's a duet, and uh, but uh, the, but her part is is enough so that people have used this as a solo for years. Oh, that you get you have to breathe here. I think that is it, my dear. So you got a couple of good things out of this, <laughs> that where you don't have to breathe, right? right. That you, you can sing things in. in one breath, I think that's, that's good. Okay, great. Attention ladies and gentlemen, um, if the owner of a green BMW, license plate 3TDB394, or a tan Mercedes, license plate 4VI144, is in Han Hall right now, if you could please move your car, you are blocking the exit and you are about to be towed. Thank you. <laughs> That's the key word, you are about to be towed. <laughs> We are live streaming this today, by the way, and I just remembered it. <laughs> uh, very good that I haven't sworn. Um, <laughs> because of that, we don't get an intermission. Sorry, so you can't stand and stretch this time. You're gonna to have to grin and bear it. So we're going to go ahead now with our third person, who is Marjorie Malte. And And William Kelly is playing for her. And uh, I have a few words about this, Marjorie. So it's because it's, it's, it's interesting stuff. Um, I think I talked to maybe a little about this to you, about this aria. Yes, we did. I, I, I told you that this is some of the information I want to give them. Um, first of all, Orfeo and Eurydice, the very famous opera of Gluck, um, has managed to stay in the repertory still. And it is the opera that was the, was what everybody said was the change into what opera, where opera was going. He wanted, Gluck had been very influenced by a, a couple of people like Calcibigi, who was his librettist, that opera had to get more interesting dramatically that it was no more to stand up and sing a lot of beautiful notes or a lot of technical, fantastic superiority, uh, because acting needed to become much more prevalent. So this is the opera that did it. Now it's interesting that he wrote after Orfeo, he wrote about 12 or 13, 14 my operas afterwards. They never have held the place that Orfeo has. So I do think that probably a lot of it has to do that there's some very wonderful arias in it, some very wonderful ballet music and choral music that has probably hel helped it to, to hold sway all these years. Iphigenie en Tauride is a magnificent opera and that is his last opera. And in my taste, it is his greatest opera but again, it holds, holds much less of anything that smacks of <laughs> no, no show-off music. That's, I call that show-off music. 
because I certainly used it a lot. Uh, and um, another opera, Armida, Alceste, all of these operas, they're done every so often. And they've got great stuff in them, but nothing has held on like Orfeo. I think Gluck thought that, that it was his mission to introduce this new style, which greatly affected uh, Magic Flute, uh, let me think, um, Fidelio, Das Rheingold, also because they're, all of these operas are about a male who is seeking somebody somewhere else. He has to go down under somewhere to find this person. And the, the rule is for these people, they cannot look at her or him when they find them. So th that's the main thrust of the story of, of, of this. Orfeo chooses to go down into Hades. We know where that is. And then he ends up in Elysium, we know where that is, and goes through all of these trials, but he still can't look at her. So that is the main thrust of the opera, how, how redemption can happen, and yet you can't look at the person until finally something even more wonderful happens, like a god arrives and says, okay, you've, been, you've, been, you've done okay. You, you can have this person back. Um, Anyway, this was the beginning of the Reformation, and it was important that the, the, for the star singers. It took about a century, I think, for this to really take hold, because after Gluck, now he came after the Baroque age of really stand, standing still and singing great technical feats, but there came Mozart, and then there came the beginning of the Romantic age, and all of those Rona Sussini, Donizetti, Bellini, all of those guys had still very much show-off music, although they had stories with them that were probably a little stronger. But it took about 100 years before we got Puccini. And Verdi, all through Verdi, Verdi was singing, writing less and less fast show-off music in his operas, too. So you, then you get to Aida, and you get to Don Carlo, and Otello, and, and then you have something way out here called Falstaff <laughs> that is completely different than everything, and it's the masterpiece of all time. So. But in any event, she's about to sing an aria that was uh, put in, if you buy a score of Orfeo from, pub, from you know, a music store, the publisher being Ricordi, and it's Orfeo and Euridice, you're going to see in the score another aria that says Tancredi by Bertoni, and it's put right at the end of the first act. Now, all of the purists had a fit when I sang that, because they said it was by Bertoni. Well, I had had some information by some really knowledgeable people that said no. Bertoni pinched it from Gluck. It's one of Gluck's early operas. Gluck wrote a lot of early operas that we know nothing about. But it was finally put back in, in the Frankfurt version of Orfeo and in the Paris version, especially by a very famous lady named Pauline Viardo Garcia, a great, great singer from the Garcia family, which included Maria Malebran, her father, Manuel Garcia, and her brother, Manuel Garcia II, an, an unbelievable, overachieving family. <laughs> Manuel I had uh, two roles that we know written for him that we still have in the repertory. One is, um, Alma Viva in Barbara Seville was written for him, and on another um, Otello by Rossini was written for him, done very sparingly these days because it's got five tenors in it. And when you have all those high tenors that have to sing, but we've got them now. We just did an opera at the Met called the La Donna del Lago that had se several tenors that have to be very, very florid singers and you know, really, really great vocalists. And so we can do that now. I hope we'll see more of 
Otello, it's also very interesting to see how Verdi liked Rossini's Otello. He, he took a lot of form from it, especially the very famous Willow Song in Prayer of Desdemona is, is absolutely the same form that Rossini used in his, his opera of Otello. Did you ever sing that? No. I think it's a good piece for you. I will learn it for you. <laughs> Assis a pied d'un salice, beautiful. It, it, although Verdi did Ave Maria as the prayer at the end, Rossini did a, a different a prayer that you know he wrote or somebody his librettist wrote. It's not the Ave Maria, but I can tell you that when I I did this, I had so much um, antagonism from the press. They, this how dare she include an aria by Bertoni? Oh my God. Okay, so one Christmas at my house, Martin Katz, who's due here any day to come and give some of his great wisdom, uh, gave my husband, who became former, but he's my husband then, a book of memoirs of Saint-Saëns, okay? I decided, I said, could I borrow this first and read it? Because it looked very interesting to me. So I read the book and it came to information on this aria that she's going to sing. Pauline Viardo and Hector Berlioz did 125 continuous performances of Orfeo in Paris. Did I get the year here? Yes, 1859 is when it was. And she sang this aria. Okay, and, and nobody said anything well because it, they knew then that it was by uh, Gluck, absolutely. And Saint-Saëns said that he wrote the orchestration for the aria that they used and that it was the sole reason why they did 125 performances. <laughs> and I know that because we are always seeking these things. It's an aria that brings down the house. <laughs> and Pauline Viardo being the, <laughs> the great, the great, Pauline Viardo was not only a great singer, but she was an incredible pianist who toured with Liszt when she was 10 years old. And she was a fantastic composer. We all know a lot more of her songs now. She did an opera, she, she anyway, she wrote this long, very long cadenza that frankly is out of style for a Baroque aria, it's the Baroque sounding aria, but she wrote it for everything so show off in the human voice of a mezzo or contralto that you can't resist doing it even though it's out of style. You're not doing that, are you? <laughs> I think I should loan it to you or give it to you so you see if you like it to do it at another time. Every time I did it, it brought down the house. <laughs> but it wasn't me, it was Gluck. All right, so now here we are at the end of the first act, yes. and he has just received from Amor. What did she say to him? He, it's a he, always sung by a woman. He said, if you, you can actually see her again, you have to go get her down there. And you cannot look at her or talk to her or touch her until you are back on earth. And Orfeo is not sure, he's not very confident he can do it, but he wants to see her so much that he decides to do it. And this, in this recitative <coughs> is where he makes the decision. Of the, this is where we hear Gluck in his dramatic turnaround that he has done. This is a very very dramatic, even before, you know, before um, people began to realize what was going on with, with his operas. So here we are. So she answers right now, what, what, do you, what, do you, what did you just say, right, her first words? Yes. What did you say? What did I hear? What did I hear? Oh my God. Okay, here we go. He's on his way down. Il cuore è morto, il cuore 
words are really fantastic. He says, ¿Qué, qué dice? What did you just say? What am I hearing? And he says, now he says, Dunque, therefore, I am going to, uh, it's, uh, uh, excuse me, Eurydice is going to live. I'm going to have her presente, prese, present with me. And then he says, uh, and after lots of suffering and, and this, this mo moment and all of the, the, the war of my af affections and, and my, my, my thoughts, I'm going to be able to hold her. You know, I'm going to have her to, at my breast and, and suppose, and he's, he's thinking about her, what she's going to say and what she's going to think, and I, I mean, I, and her pain, and I, I, I understand. It's, she, it's the, these words are so terribly important. Let's start and then go, I'll stop you again, all right? I, that's, uh, I've got a real take on this myself, you know, that's so why I'm going to give you mine. Uh, que dice, let's start. Well, let's, let's, let's see that in, in your eyes, too. Que dice, que asculta, he isn't, doesn't quite get it. Is this what you've said to me? We need to see that on your face, too. Sing again, dunque. Wait, let's hear. But let's hear. Dun. We need dunque. It's, the word is dunque in Italian. Sento gelarmi il sangue. I, I feel my, my, bread, my blood running cold and, and my, my heart is trembling. That's when he's saying, oh my God, can I do this? Can I go down to 80s and try to bring her back and not look at her? Really, lots of doubt. Yeah. But all this music that's played in between, chung, 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 ba, 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 decision, ma! I think it should be a little bit um, slower okay. when okay. you say that. Okay. Instead of malopotro, that's that's another way of looking at it. I think he's got getting his strength together. Malopotro, lo voglio, orizzoluto. 
I resolved, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Now this, I think, can be a little bit slower because he's, this resolve is, is building in him. Il grande l'insoffribile de male. Just, just steady as she goes. <laughs> All right, el se privo de luna, it is, is to be deprived of the one, only one you love. That's, that's one of the most insufferable bad things that you can have. So try to get, I like to feel a lot of sustaining in there, that, that place. All right, from play, uh, be, at, just before Malo Votro, the end of, end of et cor, please. Stronger gesture. Okay. You go when you say ta 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 ta. Assistete mi o dei. Come on, gods. And now he's telling the gods, I need your assistance. Yeah. Assistete mi o dei. I accept the law, la legge, right? La legge accetto. <laughs> right? And let's just do it like like I, I'm going or, or a fist or something like that. Okay. Okay. Let's go from. Uh, Assistete mio dei, play the, what, just before? Before? Assistete mio No, let him, let, 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 I'm sorry. Sing from, uh, yes, right. Amato getto. Assistete mio dei, la legge accetto. Sweetheart, and maybe that was my fault by saying go. So there shouldn't be any 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 weight between the chung chung, bum bum da la 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 la. This is about the temple. You, you, you know you got to check. Is on the next page. Okay, you give him the temple. That's you can do. This is a little slower. Oh, 
absolutely wonderful. I made, I, I, that was a te tempo that I, you can't sing it any faster than that. That was great, absolutely great. <clears throat> um, a tiny little thing when you sing, Lorendo, you gotta really hit, give an accent on the word Lorendo. Lorendo Tataro, there. Uh, let's talk about the end. Yes. You don't want a breath? Etsi tutti qua. Su pernar. I think I think that's a, a more effective, okay. and and that lets you not worry. By the way, uh, make. Uh, William, who, no, who's playing? I forgot. William, yes. Every time it comes to a to one of those holds at the end of it, you've got to help her slow down just a little bit. See when when she sings. That's a, that, that, that you've got to help her retard there. And same thing over on uh, where where we got another. One of those fermatas. Um, can't, can't even find them now. Well, anyway, the fermatas, you've got to help her slow down. So let's do the end and try the cadenza um, with, with um, a breath, like, and then, and you know what she's going to do, William? She's going to hold uh, and, do, and do a big trill. Okay, let's hear it. Go back, go back to. Then can we do the, la the last killer run? <laughs> the next two bars are almost impossible. right on, on the where it's written. You know, these are the places where you can come in after oh. everything stops. I would put your C on his last triad there. Okay. Where he goes, da -la -da -la 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 -la. C to right on that, you know where I mean? On third beat? On the third beat, exactly. Okay. Want to just do that end, please, William? puts a, a period on it, yes. you know, you've got, and you've got to have that. And when, it, when you do this on the stage, you haven't done it yet, have you? This no. is the first. Oh, this is the first. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Um, you'll find that you've got to figure out something to do at the very end. <laughs> that. And if you could get a staging where they take you down into the basement. So you're descending right into Hades when they open up the trap door and all that. That's very effective, too. <laughs> you're wonderful. Thank you. William, you're wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you a little little postscript. I finally did this opera in French in Paris, and uh, that means learning it all over in another language, that's your right. Um, and afterwards, not before, somebody gave me a direct copy of Pauline Viardo's score when she sang this role in Paris. 
And you know where he says, sento gelarmi il sangue. I'm telling you, I really, my sangue was getting cold too because <laughs> all the breath marks were the same. Many places where I put the syllable on, in a slightly different place were exactly what I did. It was just unbelievable. I truly couldn't believe it. I still have it, so I can prove it if anybody wants to see it. And, but that's all, all of those markings I had done in that aria and in the entire opera for everything. And they, they matched her, so that was, that was, that was quite something when, when that happened to me. But it did not happen to me when I first got in touch with this wonderful song that's coming. We are going to have Chris Yoon now. And who's playing for Chris? Dan Curlin. <laughs> this is a song out of a book of um, 36 Arie Antique. Do you have that? collection. No, I'm not even sure if it's available anymore. But Donaudi was a, a lesser known composer of the Romantic era. He comes in there with Mascagni and Puccini and all that gang. And uh, I was very surprised to find out that he wrote a lot of operas. And they never performed. <laughs> never, never. And, but this song is, a, is part of this, this uh, collection of arie. So, were these songs or were they arias? I'm not sure. I'd have to find, find out from somebody who knows. But they were published by Ricordi, and uh, apparently he was a very precocious kid and wrote his first opera called Folchetto when he was 13. But none of them have held, and these so the songs, his, his songs are really not thought of too highly in Italy. I know because I programmed them. <laughs> and I was criticized for it. Whereas you think this is as good as Tosti, maybe, right? But Tosti's the big gun. Tosti's the one who's, he's the, their genius. He was, he's their Schubert. And, but uh, Donaudi, they look upon as a much lesser composer. So it took the people outside of, of Italy to sing more of it, although this was sung by Caruso, Gigi, McCormick, Rosa Poncel, all the great singers of that era sang it. So, what, if, what do you got to say about this? What the, what's this about? Um, I find this music very interesting because the melody, Louder. melody is very sweet and dear, but the message itself of the poem is very sad. It's about um, his um, love who's disappeared from his sight and um, is gone from his life forever. So, yeah. Sad. Very Real sad. sad. And so this is a lot of almost Italian breast beating, you know, but you have to really connect with that area of your soul. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. 
performance, you would go yeah. on and sing the next verse. But since you skipped to the second verse, yes. this is not a performance, let's do the end of the first verse. Sorry. Because it makes a difference <laughs> in, in how you perform it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, from there, please again. This is just my key. <laughs> When we get to this music, we start to see things written above the staff that we haven't seen in <laughs> Gluck and uh, that kind of composer back to, and Handel and all. We start, we start to see things that are written like con molto sentimento. The composer wrote that above the very first bar with, with much sentiment. And then we see words like allargando, which means take your time, do what you want to with it in a way. And then you see um, other things like uh, dolcissimo, written, and, and um, largamente e sostenuto con anima, L largely and, and, and sustained with soul. All that kind of stuff gets written in here now. Several places where it's written tenuto, which means hold, and then you have at, at a tempo of rallentando, which means slows down, another, another dolce, another retard, another uh, tempo, and then we see more alargandos, and uh, another alargando, and a tempo. All of this is to show you how much 
soul and anima the composer wanted you to, to put in it. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think you better. Uh, I, I think your tempo is one hair too slow. Huh? He, he says andante, and then he says quasi adagio. So I think it's somewhere just a little bit like Right? Mm -hmm. Something more like that. Do you mind doing that? Mm -hmm. And when you get to places like It's a, a melisma that just that The Italians have a way of doing that that is so simple, mm -hmm. you know? And the, and the and the double C, uh, the double C on the occhi, right? Mm -hmm. It's very effective there. And what cerco in van? A lot on van. Each time you come to that, I'm looking for her in vain. Cerco in van. All of that. And then at the end, again, another lagramente sostenuto con anima, blah, 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 tempo. And he gives us almost every bar what, what should happen. So that's so different than music that basically was bare over the staff up, up to about that time of the Romantic era. OK, I would love to have you start this again. Do you mind? Hmm. Hmm.
sorry, one tiny little thing. If you can hold the last note out till the end. Oh, if, even though it's not. <laughs> I know. No, I'm no, it depends. <laughs> no, you know what? It depends on how long you stay on the fermata. Mm -hmm. Since I, since I let me. I think you have to do that. Okay. Do it from. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Ma senza lei. Ma senza Yeah, I think you have to do that. Wonderful. Thank you.